Shalom and good day all, this is Tehillim29, back again and welcome to the Super Sons Fortress of Attitude. And today I've got something a little bit special for you, and that is covering a topic and of course something in connection to an article, but this article, this is being done specifically for the Super Sons Fortress of Attitude website. And I really hope you enjoy what is about to be presented here. Because we fear the Super Sons are coming to the rescue for things that people forget about the Super Sons series of comics. So let's start off at the beginning. The Super Sons is a series that came out of DC Rebirth, to which we were introduced to John Samuel Kent, uh, also via The Road to Rebirth, and also by Dan Jurgens and Peter J- James Marcy, but also not forgetting John Samuel Kent's first introduction via the DC Convergence Superman comic run. And of course, you'll see what you've got. Um, for you is a picture of the young John Samuel Kent from the DC Comics Convergence event. And um, I'll now move to the next. So that's the story to which we start to hear in um well this is the volume which we start to learn of john kent and then of course we move into what is one of my favorites and that is the trials of the super sons and um for that let the trials begin now in the trials of the super sun this became an official testing ground to see if they could put two official offspring of the main heroes to see if they would work well in the comic run under Peter J. Tomasi, to which in the Superman run, along with Patrick Gleason, who has worked alongside Peter J. Tomasi on his Batman and Robin run, the care for both these characters' offspring being Damian Wayne and John Samuel Kent, Superboy, Uh, as Damien Wayne as Robin. Uh, We already had set up, we already had a setup of friends for both characters. For Damien Wayne, it was Mayor Descartes. And I'll bring up a picture of uh, Mayor Descartes here. And she's the one in the nobody suit that you can see right here. And you know what? She says one of the best lines I really enjoy in the Damien, um, the Robinson of Batman run. And um, here she says, this R is for redemption. And that's one thing about a lot of writers today is that, yes, that R on Robin 
is completely about the redemption of him and his character. And that's pretty important. But apart from that, what about for Superboy's character? To which took place in Robinson of Batman under Gleason, and the character of Kathy, to which both Tomasi and Gleason worked on Superman run, and I'll now show you a picture of Kathy. And here she is looking at John in the sky. <laughs> A absolutely beautiful scene in the DC Comics Rebirth. And I highly recommend that you check this out. And another character that was added on this run. And that was the character of Boizaro. And I'll pull up a picture of Boizaro. And he's right here with his family. And we get to see their dog, their mom, <laughs> their cat, uh, even their mouse there if you have a look. So there's quite a bit here. But we will be returning back to those characters. Now it's time for me to move on to the next part. To which we end up learning about their first villain. In, Superman, um, in Super Sons, Volume 1, When I Grow Up. Now, their first villain after the trial of the Super Sons after the trial of the Super Sun, when Damien and John earned their capes from their biological fathers, Plus some getting to know each other time, which you can definitely see they were both on a rocky ground until they started to begin to like each other. They still had things that kept them both as different individuals. Sure, there was a small age difference between them, as well as a height difference, which still made it all exciting. As the first Super Sun story arc began, we learned of a character... And we learned of the character who would be their first villain being Kid Amazo. So I'll pull up Kid Amazo and that's him right there. Who would be their first villain being Kid Amazo and how his, this character had somewhat changed some more since moving into DC Rebirth. We still see somewhat of Maya in the background who had been observing them until she was left unseen in the run, but still appeared in the Superman Rebirth run alongside with Kathy. By the time the Super Sons, and by the time the Super, uh, by the time the Super Sons start to make take on Kid Amazing, uh, Kid Amazing, both John and Damien now have small nicknames they call each other. As for John, he called Damien D. <laughs> and for Damien, he called John J. As their friendship began to grow. Holy multiverse, Batboy! By the time we move into the planet of the Capes arc, which... The arc also crossed over with the DC Rebirth to Teen Titans, which was written by Benjamin Percy. They encounter an, anim an enemy which managed to age up Damien to being Grandpa Age. The Teen Titans, which Damien was also working with, um, also enjoyed John Samuel Kent, aka Superboy's company, in being able to help them out. This will also come back up again later on in the next volume. Um, it is also a volume including these issues that officially get the Super Sun's headquarters between Gotham and Metropolis 
uh, in Morrison Bay being the fortress of attitude. And of course, let's pull up one of my favorite things in this. And this is it, the fortress of attitude. <laughs> and this is actually um, one of those things that led to the creation of the Super Suns Fortress of Attitude website. So a big thanks to Peter J. Tomasi in that. And I really hope you enjoy the next upcoming things in relation to this part of the story. Oops. Just take care of something. Also in the upcoming issues, it was also established that they now both go to the same school together, especially to help increase Damien's social skills. And John S. Kent helps Damien to do that. <laughs> Moving into the next thing, and that is the Super Sons of Tomorrow. As the arc of the Super Sons of Tomorrow starts, we have an evil, or we have a Tim Drake from the New 52 who enters the DC universe, the uh, DC Rebirth universe, into the world of the Super Sons, to which he lays blame on Damien and John being responsible for the destruction of something that happened in his universe with his John Kent. So this one goes into a preemptive measures. Uh, preemptive measures. to stop this John Samuel Kent in the rebirth of DC. As this arc occurs, this brings both Damien and John so much closer together as friends, as this Tim Drake also takes on a new mantle known as Saviour. Things eventually get resolved towards the end of the story, with the help of Superman on the scene as well. But when it came to things in relation to John Kent joining the Teen Titans. It was a letdown to his character because not all the characters were working as a team. But with some rough spots, which showed later in the Benjamin Percy run. As we move into Volume 3 of Super Sons, this story had two arcs, one consisting of Talia al Ghul, to which the arc was called The Parent Trap, to which something was done to threaten Lois Lane. This story was also used to teach John some more about Damien Wayne's past before he became Robin, as his best friend was also an assassin who worked under his mother, and the, the League of Assassins, of course. And it definitely had some funny moments, including John Kent asking if he could be taught how to use a sword, to which Damien refuses. <laughs> the second arc consisting of uh, Kira Mezo, to which it took out many of the members of the Justice League, and Cyborg was there also to help out the Super Sons upon completion of the art. Until we moved into a one shot crossover with the Super Sons and Dino Mutt. So Moving into the present friends list, uh, the present friend, uh, the present friends list of the Super Sons. Uh, with this list, there will be some carryover from 
pre-Super Suns as well as present Super Suns in this time period. So starting off with Colin, who is a friend of Damian Wayne. All right, there's Colin. And he was met in, I think it was the Streets or Gates of Gotham run um, with Paul Dini, I believe. Um, then we've got Mayor Descartes. So we, I will be going back to, oops, wrong one. Um, Mayor Descartes. We also have Surin. Also another friend of Damian Wayne. Uh, his complete name is Surin Durga. And that's him with May Descartes. And of course, Goliath. We can't forget Goliath. Uh, for John, it was Kathy. So here's Kathy again. And Boizaro, which we saw earlier. We also had the Teen Titans when they were under Damian Wayne. And um, this is the Teen Titans under Damian Wayne. And as you can see there, we've got John. And that was actually setting up and preparing for the crossover in DC Rebirth. We, of course, had the members of the Justice League in that time period. And these are the present members of the Justice League. Uh, we can't forget, of course, Dino Mutt and Blue Falcon, who you saw before. And also the members of the Bat family, as well as the Superman family. And also the friend, uh, also the Planet of the Capes friends, which they made in Volume 2, or they met in Volume 2. So, moving into the next area. Oh. And that is the Action Detectives. Moving into the adventures of the Super Sons, Peter J. Marcy didn't miss a beat with both the first and second volume, where in this we had one, uh, where in this one we had the Super Sons take on a slightly different villain group called the Gang. And in this gang, John, you. Uh, the gang used John S. Kent to obtain the Hypercube, which had its appearance, uh, which had made its appearance in the Peter J. Tomasi Superman run. In this story, the Super Sons definitely got to explore outside the Earth uh, they presently live on to go to a planet or two, plus meet up with a robotic Jonah Hex. And end up seeing what could possible, what could be a possible future of both of them, then causing the system that they were trapped in to be broken, to which <laughs> had them in a dream state. We also had Tommy Tomorrow turn up, plus members of the gang, which we learn are connected to the sentient within the hypercube itself eventually wanting to make friends with the Super Sons without either Batman or Superman knowing about it, it does eventually get restored to its place in the for Fortress of Solitude.
So moving into the, the time of the Challenge of the Super Suns. In the Challenge of the Super Suns, it showed up at the right time at, at the right place. Uh, in a time of disarray, with things ending like DC Death Metal to entering the DC Future State, we got the introduction of two villains, Felix Faust and Vandal Savage, which he had the Super Sons in their sights with their own cruel devices, but also appearances of the character called Aurora, who was Felix Faust's young apprentice in this run. Our fave Super Sons had to go out of their way to save some members of the Justice League, Whilst trying to reverse the curse of a scroll, the setup of the story was amazing and definitely gave high manga vibes. Even in, even uh, as we even had our protagonist J and D, even being sent to the past and brought forward again into the future, these amazing fourteen chapters were broken in the seven physical issues of, of this run. Also, seeing how the members of the Justice League, once they solved out what the Super Sons were doing, <laughs> came to, or also came to their rescue. So the new friends made in this time were the Hypercube, as we uh, still see what's before you. Um, hold on, I'll just fix this up for the other one. Well, just get ready to move on to the next part. Um, we had the Hypercube. We had Jonah Hex. So I'll pull up the robotic Jonah Hex or the cyborg Jonah Hex, which was really nice to have in the story. Um, we also had Aurora. And she was a really good character. But you also did get to see that character aged up as well. And it was really enjoyable. I, I loved every issue. And of course, I gave my own ratings. But I also chose to revisit it too on the channel. If you're really that interested, just type up Challenge of the Super Suns. It will be found in a lot of um, the Super Suns Fortress of Attitude playlist. Now, moving into the next part. And that is the Superman and Robin special. Super Sons reunited. As we move into Peter J. Tomasi, the Super Sons one shot called Superman and Robin, Peter J. Tomasi brings back the Hypercube with the great editing and story skills of his team. They sure made us, they made sure to keep us us the audience up to date in relation to the hypercube once again as it sets off the alarm at the fortress of solitude with the return of this sentient hypercube the super sons were both called back again <laughs> back in again to the fortress of solitude one thing i think a lot of people missed was the actual title of this chapter which leaves things very open-ended not plot hole filled as many people think um as we know peter j tomasi is returning with another super sons um to which by the time of this recording uh we've had saved by bell rev come out um hopefully in both the super sons dark crisis stories uh time will tell with those solicitations as well now I want to move into a slightly different area. And that is something I call the Restoration Station. And for this, it talks about the restoration or how the Super Sons could be restored. Now, by restoring the Super Sons, even in the adventures that they have had under Tomasi, they have been incredible. And I'm sure you've noticed in this article, I did stay, uh, um, did, 
Uh, in this video, that I chose to stay away from Brian Michael Bendis and Tom Taylor's destruction of these characters, as it comes off a little like a sexual fetish from both writers, as well to some of the DC editors. Sorry, but you guys need to find a job packing boxes at your local Woolworths or Walmart outlaw outlet to get in touch and down to earth as to where you are delivering your product to and not to act like cows whenever criticism comes your way on all subjects. As criticism, as it can be destructive, it can also be constructive. To help put things in a different perspective, by making the present John Kent we do see in the DC comic universe, we can make him the new 52 universe and it ties in with what tom taylor shared in his story with the character um that it was his character J J uh, that jorel from brian michael bendis brought back and not the john samuel kent from to which the super sons readers actually love to read about um including with some actions around the Taylor Bendis representation of Lois Lane that lack both heart and soul. Now, by bringing back the sentient and magical hypercube, yep, that's right. I'm going to go back to that hypercube again. <laughs> Because as you notice something here that really stands out, it calls it the magical mystery cube. So it does indeed bring back the opportunity to get the Super Sons back together again with a legit Superman, Clark Kent, and Robin run under Damian Wayne. Uh, Robin Damien Wayne run under Tomasi, which could either be in a mini or maxi series of seven to 14 issues long. As you could have the hypercube return, but this time it shows up in the Super Sun's headquarters in Morrison Bay. And we know where that is, don't we? A fortress of attitude. <laughs> All right. Um, here we go. Back here. And it, and by having it return this time, it shows up in the Super Sun's headquarters in the Morrison Wayne. But as Damien Way investigates the in intruder alert. To find it there this time we get a glimpse of a message from the hypercube to damien from his missing friend john samuel kent so basically his own help me d you are my only hope <laughs> and damien informs his father to which his father gives him permission to go with superman to go in search for john samuel kent together the hypercube being one of the things to help track john samuel kent down as batman now has to keep an eye on the present multiverse version of the tom taylor bendis boy superboy as damien saves his best friend with batman's best friend being clark kent aka superman now the next thing i would like to move on is to increasing the friendship uh, the super sun's friendships now i'm not too sure if you've noticed it or not in this video but maybe you already have is that there is actually a bit of a theme here which i'm bringing across and that is the area of their friendships now i'm going to start to cover the list of characters uh one by one So, starting off, 
we first things first, or first character first, whether you like or hate him, and that is Connor Hawk. Whether you love or hate what was done with um, this particular um, event that was happening in the story, I really did like when they had some time to actually get to, well, one-on-one time. And it wasn't bad, it wasn't terrible, but I did actually enjoy what happened. And the picture I chose here is actually a probably one of my favorite pictures that came out. The next characters that I'd like him to sort of like um, be friends with and team up with is Jay and Ari West. As I've really been enjoying what Jeremy Adams has been doing with both of these characters. And it's absolutely incredible. The next character I want to bring in is Sideways, Derek James. And you're probably wondering why I'd want to bring in Sideways. He's a Dan Didio character. Well, I don't really care that he's a Dan Didio character. And the story was actually very well written. And I would have loved to have seen this uh, as I've brought up once before on the channel. Uh, I would love to uh, uh, actually seen this character get about 50 issues being bi bi-weekly. And I think this character would actually be really good for the Super Sons. Yes, he's a little bit older than him, but who cares? But who's not to say that this character... Even though he was also ruined by Brian Michael Bendis, I'm being completely honest. Yes, the character was ruined by Brian Michael Bendis. And that's one of the reasons why I'd actually like to bring this character in with him. Now, the next character I want to bring in is Ty Pham. And you're wondering, who's Ty Pham? All right, let me show you who Ty Pham is. This is Ty Pham, and he's from the Green Lantern Legacy. And I really enjoyed uh, reading through the young adult graphic novel of this. And I'm really looking forward to reading the sequel. Now, I'm still waiting to get my hands on the sequel. Um, and hopefully by the time this video goes out, I've already got it. Um, and another character that I'd like to bring in. And yes, they are another lantern. And you're probably wondering, why would you pick another lantern? Well, why not? And it is Kelly Kinsella. And I'm sure you're wondering why. Well, written by... One thing I'd like to see is this character written by its actual creator being Patrick Gleason and not Brian Michael Bendis. Because I felt that there were some things that needed some clearing up in the story of what Bendis did around her. And it just felt unearned in some of her things that she did. Now, the next character that I'll bring into this is actually a character to which Damien has been friends with before. And the character here is Ravager. And there was a really nice story written by PJ, um, PJ Crow. Uh, this is before even... Um, the DC Comics Rebirth. And I really enjoyed the interaction to which PJ Krull uh, did between both Damian Wayne and also Ravager. He also wrote another series which was called Bloodlines. And it also goes to show that this character was also quite good in um, executing some somewhat slice of life moments as well like in regards to the school related and that is one reason why i'd like to bring in um this character and maybe even bring him back on board as well as a writer um 
Now I'll move on to the next character. And you're probably wondering why this character. I'll explain why. And that is Respawn. Right, at the time I wrote this. Oops. Hold a moment. Sorry, wrong picture there. Um, at the time I wrote this, um, Respawn had been killed off too early, but I, I know that by the time this comes out, we've already learned that this character is back alive again. So moving into the next character, and that is Miguel from Dial H for Hero. Again, this is one character which the story's beginning, especially the first issue, was all right, but it really slipped towards the end. And one of the things I want to point out is that I felt that this character was ruined by the writer who worked on his story and around his character because one of the things that was totally abandoned the, uh, the rest of the way of the story was what happened with Miguel's uncle. And that's the thing. What, what the hell happened with Miguel's uncle? And it would be really nice to know to see that plot hole fixed up, um, even if it is in a Super Sons related story. I, I think it would be absolutely great. So I'll now move on to the next character. And this is a character to which Damian Wayne has met through Gotham Academy. And he's not quite the first character that he ends up meeting in there too. And I do have another character that I wish to include in relation to this. And that is Maps or AKA Mia Mizuguchi. As I really enjoyed their interaction to how Becky Cloonan actually wrote the Gotham Academy story. And yet, it was a really well written slice of life school related story. Yes, it had its mysteries, but it was amazing. Both the first and the second volume, and also that um, other semester that came out. It was really amazing, and I, I hope eventually that they do bring out the Gotham Academy um, into an omnibus. Now, there is actually another character from Gotham Academy, which I'm going to include right now before I uh, finish off with the last two characters. And that is... Colton Rivera. And you're wondering, why would I choose this character? <laughs> why Colton? Well, I think Colton could actually have a pretty decent place amongst the Super Sons and these somewhat misfits of a way. <laughs> and of course, these are their own characters and they're really enjoyable as well. And I also enjoyed some of the things that he was um he did in the story yes he was a pain in the bum character but he wasn't always a pain in the bum but if it's one thing you do actually learn about this character is that he's someone who is gay but the way the story was written about the character coming out was gay it was very well done it was very organic and you know what? I don't care that the character's gay. One thing the writer did right was make me like the character before he revealed he was gay. And you know what? That is fantastic. You won me over. And this is why I'd like to include Colton Rivera in the list. Um, so moving into the next character. And this is uh, another character from... Um, Adventures of the Super Sons. And that is Joker Jr. I would love to see this character return. 
as I feel that this character would like this is a character that was brought in and uh, brought in with Rex Lufa. <laughs> And you really got to see this character um, really shine in, well, instead of being seen as a bad guy, this character really shone in being the good guy. And I, I really enjoyed that. And yet yeah, this character needs to re return. Um, but the only way that could happen is with the Hypercube. All right, last but not least, I've got one more character. And of course, by the time this video goes up, people already know about this character. And you're probably wondering, why? Why, why, why? Thing is, why not? And this is the character of Sydney. For what this story was, I did like it. It's not perfect. About the only thing I would sort of fix up with how this story was done is that I'd remove the shirt and just give him a shirt and tie. Um, that's the only other thing. But you, it is really nice to see that you see both Damien and John pay attention to what's happening with the scene. And yes, they do get to see him being bullied because he's the new kid in school. And bullying is wrong in on all levels. And that's the truth. It is wrong on all levels. Uh, yes, this is one character I would really like to see brought into the story as well. And I think this story would actually, or this character would also bounce off really well with Colton. And that's the truth. I think this character would work very well with Colton. So in essence, it would be really good to see that happen. Now, I'm sure many people remember as well the Wonder Comics run. Well, maybe next time I do a video, I'd like to bring up something a little bit different instead of the Wonder Comics run. How about something that comes out of the Super Suns? Um, and I'll leave it at that. So, I want to thank you for coming to the Super Suns Fortress of Attitude. And I'll see you again next time. And hopefully by the time um, this video goes out, who knows, either Battle of the Super Sons will be already out, or it's not Battle of the Super Sons time, but be prepared for Battle of the Super Sons. So we'll see you again at the Super Sons Fortress of Attitude. Uh -huh.